there everyone and welcome to my 2019 WWE Extreme Rules Reaction slash Results video. In this video I will be reacting to last night's pay-per-view that took place at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And of course, one more stop before SummerSlam which will be taking place next month in Toronto. And the night before, on August 10th, will be... NXT TakeOver Toronto, where it's a possibility we could have a new NXT champion because this Wednesday on NXT TV on WWE Network, 8 o'clock Eastern, Adam Cole will be issuing an open challenge for the NXT Championship. And the night after, August 11th, will be SummerSlam. So, a lot of good stuff to look forward to next week. The uh, next couple weeks will have to be the buildup in the spotlight for SummerSlam and quickly I want to mention tonight Raw will be at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale so WWE Wrestling in Long Island tonight and next week will be interesting because we'll have a couple of the old superstars making a appearance so who knows maybe somebody coming back will uh, have a have a challenge at SummerSlam or something I don't know but anyhow, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into what happened last night. So, we let off the pay-per-view with Intercontinental Championship match. Now, there was no build-up towards this match. It was pretty much, oh, we'll throw it in the pre-show last second. So, it was Finn Bauer taking on Shinsuke Nakamura, the Japanese rock star. And Shinsuke really hasn't been seen on WWE television for a while. But, towards the end, it was pretty exciting. I thought Finn was going to put away Shinsuke. Vin was very close to hitting the coup de grace. But Shinsuke countered, hit the keen jasa, and of course, your new Intercontinental Champion is Shinsuke Nakamura. So now, second time he's been champion in WWE. Last year, he won the United States Championship. So now this year, a step up, winning the prestigious Intercontinental Championship, which... Uh, it's been around for a very long time. Don't get me wrong, United States Championship's one thing, but Intercontinental Championship, you have more of a potential. That's a step up towards where you need to be in your career. So, Intercontinental Championship's a very big deal, uh, very important, and Jensuke won the second title in WWE, so very important that he did that last night. So congrats to him, and we'll see how it ends up. On SmackDown, maybe he'll uh, make an appearance this week. I don't know, but we'll see. Because I want to see the title defended at SummerSlam. It has to be at least defended at SummerSlam. So, moving on, we had Cruiserweight Championship. Who cares? I'll just quickly mention that Drew Gulak took on Tony Nese. And Gulak defended, so there was no need to get into it. There's a quick little picture from the fight last night, but... Let's move on to the main card. We let off the main card with a surprising match, which I thought this was going to be later on in the evening, but I guess the programming director said, oh, well, we'll just lead it off early. So we had the best in the world, Shane McMahon, of course, teaming up with the psychopath from Ireland. Drew McIntyre, who should be champion one day. He should be WWE champion one day, or universal champion, whatever. Taking on the big dog, Roman Reigns. And the phenom, the dead man, The Undertaker. And it was a pretty good match. It lasted 25 minutes. Very good for the time it was. Earlier on in the match, it looked like there's some momentum for Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre, but Elias actually got involved, and going towards the line you see in this picture, uh, right when Undertaker got beaten up so bad with uh, tools and equipment because it was a no-holds-barred match, Undertaker rose up, Roman rose up too, Roman was able to hit the spear on uh, Drew McIntyre, and... Uh, Undertaker was able to hit both the choke slams on Drew, Elias, and Shane. And finishing touch was the Tombstone Pile Driver to Shane McMahon. And 
Undertaker and Shane won. So pretty good ending if uh, you ask me. It's very satisfied with it. Now as far as what Shane McMahon will do down the line, we'll have to see. But I'll get into that later on in this video. So, the next match was the Usos taking on the Revival. Now, there was a little bit of a build-up towards that match. And I'll get the picture up in just a second so you all can at least see. Here we go. So this was one of the Usos, of course. And Revival looked good. Not going to say it was impressive, but the Revival still retained the Raw Tag Team Championships. I'm a little bit disappointed the Usos didn't win. I was hoping the Uso Penitentiary was going to help Jimmy and Jay, but I guess not in this match. Maybe at SummerSlam. We'll have to see maybe further down the line. So next up we had Aleister Black taking on Cesaro. And it was interesting. You know, I liked it. It was a good finish. And Alistair won. But now I feel like, what are they going to do with his character? I mean, he's been on the main roster for a while. Yet the past couple of weeks, he keeps cutting these promos. Oh, I want to be Dubai. I want to be the best. Well, Alistair, you got to prove yourself. Because you're on SmackDown now, okay? You're not on Raw. Your tag team partner from NXT, Ricochet, went to Raw, and look where that got him. At least it got him a United States Championship for a couple weeks, which we'll get into in this video, but... Alistair looked good, and I want to see more of Alistair. As far as Cesaro, I do feel bad for him because, again, Sheamus is still on the shelf the next couple months, so... We don't even know when Sheamus will come back. I mean, I want to see the bar come back. I do want to see the bar come back, but... I don't know, maybe they're going to have Sheamus come back in a separate role. We'll have to see. So I would like to see Sheamus come back. And again, Sheamus is still good when he's performing. But again, that's going to have to be when time tells. So so let's move on to our next match. Uh, we're trying to figure out where do I go. I'm trying to see. Oh, right, it was SmackDown Tag Team Championships. So we'll just go there. So we had a triple threat for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. We had... Daniel Bryan, the new Daniel Bryan, of course, with his tag team partner, Rowan, taking on the New Day and Heavy Machinery, Otis and Tucker. And I was very happy with the ending because very satisfying to see Big E and Xavier come up in the clutch. They were able to be the last two standing with the current champions. There really wasn't that much seen out of Heavy Machinery, but in the end... The New Day are now six-time WWE Tag Team Champions! That's how Xavier Woods says it, but very satisfied to at least see New Day still on top. I like the New Day. They're very entertaining. You know, they were heels at one time, but they've gotten better as baby faces. They have certainly have gotten better as baby faces. Especially how originally I wasn't really, I really wasn't into Xavier playing the trombone, but over time it grew on me, and at least now you'll see the New Day represent the tag team division. It's just a shame that Kofi Kingston won't be there all the time, considering that he has to fulfill his role as WWE Champion, but nevertheless, let's just move on to the next match, so we had... Braun Strowman taking on Bobby Lashley in a last man standing match. So it was pretty good. Bobby and Braun were really into it. At one point, it even got to the concessions area inside the Wells Fargo Center. And there was even one point where I believe Bobby was thrown off one of the ring at uh, one of the announce tables. It was pretty interesting, pretty exciting. And it was a, it, it was a dramatic ending. I mean, at the end of the match, Braun tossed Bobby off the stairwell in the crowd. And at the end, when the uh, referee was making the count for the last band count, at number eight, Braun just busted through concrete. Braun busted through it. And it was an exciting ending, and I got a very exciting conclusion. We all did, and it was 
fun to see it. And Braun moves on, and we don't know what's going to happen to Braun, honestly, but we'll see how that ends up. I will give the women their spotlight towards the end. The women definitely deserve their spotlight, of course. Definitely, without a question, in my opinion. So we'll move on. Samoa Joe taking on Kofi Kingston. Kofi, again, always playing underdog. That's what I love about Kingston. Over the years, he has impressed me with that underdog mentality. Samoa looked okay. He wasn't great, but at the end, Kofi was able to hit the SOS, and he was able to hit the Trouble in Paradise. Very old school Kofi going to his roots, and since Kofi has been champion, you've been seeing more of what the old Kofi Kingston used to be like when he was in his own singles run before New Day was found. And I was very impressed with Kofi. And I, and again, my theory is right so far. Kofi's going to walk into SummerSlam as the champion. Now, as far as who is he going to face, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens on SmackDown this Tuesday. But at least for now, we don't have to worry about Brock in the SmackDown division. But... Congrats to Kofi, congrats to the New Day. An excellent evening for the New Day with Big E and Xavier winning the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And Kofi still your WWE Champion. So now Kofi Kingston officially has been champion for three months. So Kofi won the WWE title at WrestleMania 35. So again, they're doing the right thing with Kofi. The writers are really doing an excellent job making sure that he at least walks into Philadelphia as your champion. Toronto, excuse me. Walks into Toronto as a champion, so that'll be good, I guess. We had United States Championship. A new champion was crowned. AJ Styles won with the help of Gallows and Anderson. Ricochet looked okay. He wasn't great. Ricochet tried to survive, but when you have Gallus and Anderson helping you out, yes, things are going to go good for you. And that's what happened to AJ Styles. So now AJ is a champion three times in WWE, twice winning the WWE Championship, and now one time United States Champion. So overall, pretty good for AJ. And now we're going to talk about my theory for Shane McMahon's opponent. So there was a quick uh, mid-card match. Kevin Owens came out, took on uh, the, uh, Dolph Ziggler. It was a build-up from SmackDown because Kevin Owens did a promo last week and he told Shane McMahon to kiss my rear end. And he did the same thing, and I'll explain. So it was a quick match. Uh, Kevin was able to hit the stunner. And no need to get into it, but Kevin cut a very good promo. And this is what I'm hoping that will lead up to SummerSlam. Is that Owens takes on Shane. Because I want to see that match. And the majority of us want to see that match. And I'm very happy that Owens in his face role now realizes that this is what we've been wondering over the years. Is that there's so many good wrestlers on the roster that don't even get TV time every week. Because Shane gets so much of the TV time every week. I know we didn't want to see it and it was rumored pretty much thanks to him turning heel against the Miz, but now I'm left wondering what's going to happen now. That's all I'm left wondering. I'm left wondering more questions than answers, and I still feel bad for the Miz. I mean, I want to see the Miz fight in every pay-per-view, just because, again, I like the Miz in his new role, but I don't know. Maybe there'll be like another tag team match or something, but I don't know. We'll see what happens down the line, but Owens impresses me, impresses everybody, and we'll see if there'll be a SummerSlam match with uh, with Shane McMahon. I, I, I'd hope there is. So, we'll go to the women's division. Bailey taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Two-on-one handicap match. Uh, nothing exciting out of it. I mean, I'm glad Bailey defended. Bailey's still the SmackDown Women's Champion. But, you know, I'm still left wondering, you know, are they going to continue with this boring storyline of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross being friends? I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But I'm just happy Bailey's still champion on SmackDown. So lastly, 
we will get to our main event of the evening, which was Seth Rollins teaming up with his girlfriend, Becky Lynch. So Seth going in was the Universal Champion. Becky was, of course, the Raw Women's Champion, of course, taking on the team of Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. So it was an okay match. It wasn't that too, wasn't good, wasn't great, but there was some extremeness in this match. And towards the end, what happened was Corbin landed the end of days on Seth's girlfriend, Becky. And what happened was Seth just snapped. Steph just snapped. You know, you're not even supposed to be doing that to a female um, to a female wrestler. Baron broke the rules. Baron always breaks the rules. What else is new? But anyhow, pretty much Rollins snapped, used the kendo stick on Corbin, and hit three curb stomps to Baron Corbin. So it was a decent ending, I guess. And of course, Seth at that time defended the... Universal Championship, and Becky was still able to keep her Raw Women's Championship, so that's good. But unfortunately, guess what happened toward the end? Earlier in the evening, Paul Heyman came out and hinted that Brock was going to cash in the money in the bank briefcase. And wouldn't you know, right at the end, cue the Brock Lesnar music. He came out with the referee and Paul Heyman. Brock came out, hit the German suplex twice on Rollins, Brock cashed in the briefcase, hit the F5, Brock is now a three-time Universal Champion, and I am very disappointed with this company. I thought that maybe they were going to save it for SummerSlam next month, but no, you don't want that, because, I'm, because Vince McMahon was like, oh, I don't want that to happen. Screw everybody. I'm Vince McMahon. And again, this is what happens, okay? You're going to lose viewers. I thought that Brock was going to cash in on Kofi. All right? Because at least then you'd have a draw to when SmackDown will be on Fox in September. But now, what's there to see on Fox in the fall when SmackDown moves? I really don't get it. And I don't know. Hopefully, Seth will get a rematch against Brock at SummerSlam. We'll have to wait and see. But again, I'm very disappointed with the ending. I mean, if I was in Philadelphia, I would have just booed when Brock won. Because I at least wanted to see it happen at SummerSlam. But I guess not. And terrible writing again. Why would you close out the show with Brock, first of all, cashing in the briefcase and then winning the darn thing? So, I'm very disappointed. A lot of people were mixed reactions towards it and we'll see what happens towards SummerSlam but Seth should definitely get an automatic rematch as far as Becky Lynch Seth's girlfriend I don't know what's going to happen to Becky I mean I, I hope they'll give a viable opponent I mean we'll see what happens hopefully not Alexa Bliss because that would be I mean yes Alexa's on Raw but still that would be just corny to do that you no know? I mean it would be stupid I mean, I don't really know who could take on Becky in the Raw division. I really don't. I mean, what are they going to do? Put Charlotte Flair back? I mean, that's a possibility, knowing how bad these writers are. And, uh... I mean, honestly, I don't know. I don't know who could take on Becky right now. I really can't name anybody on the top of my head who deserves a chance against Becky Lynch. I mean, it'll go down the line, but we'll see. So, with that, I'm going to wrap up my... Extreme Rules results and reaction video. I hope you all enjoyed. And until the next one, please take care.